Hello, welcome to Life a Spiritual Day. I'm Sangeeta Maheshwari and we have an economist, educationist, philanthropist who supports many NGOs and has this initiative of College to Village and Village to College that has transformed St. Xavier's College into a university. I am deeply, deeply grateful and honored to have Reverend Father Felix Raj gracing our platform. Father, welcome to Life is Spiritual. Day. Thank you so much. We have this platform to awaken the hero within. And with your experience of guiding, with your under your mentorship and leadership, thousands of students who have graduated from St. Xavier's, if we could have some insights of yours so that our viewers could benefit. Sure. First of all, I want to thank you for this wonderful initiative that you have taken. Okay. Yes, to inspire people, to bring out what is deep within them. And I think it must have reached hundreds, thousands. And I wish that it reaches millions of people, oh, those who benefit. I'm also more or less in the same line as the principal of the college. Right now, of course, as the Vice Chancellor of St. Xavier's University, there are so many students, you know, in your hands. So many students who have come for their studies and you are responsible for their life. And this is what normally I tell their parents, that you give your students, your daughters and your sons to us, and it is our responsibility to make them now citizens of a country, sons and daughters of God. This is what it is. So basically for me, spirituality is what matters. And so why we began this college to village, village to college? is a project that we felt that every student in the college must visit villages, must face the village problems, must help out the village children. And I always said that this meeting point of college students and village children is a point of revolution, is a revolution of education. On the one hand, the university students or college students who go to the villages, they understand the problems of the villages, understand the problems of the parents, understand the problems of the village schools, understand the problems of the village children, and how difficult it is to be there. I can give you one example. One of the students who went there for the first time, he went, he went with his water bottles, went with his sandwiches, because his mother had told him not to eat in the village. But the same boy, after a month, he got totally transformed. Whatever food his mother gave, he went and shared it with the children who in the villages. You see? That was the total transformation that took place in the life of that boy. And he's not the only one. And I've come across so many of them who do this. And so we felt that when our students go to the villages, their whole life gets transformed. The value system gets changed. And then instead of waiting away their time, they say, now I have to study because they are challenged. Mm -hmm. That challenge makes their study meaningful. And so they spend their time and energy in what they do in the universities and colleges much more in a better way. On the other hand, what happens is these village children meet these dadas and didis mm -hmm. of the universities and colleges. So immediately they get an idea. One day I must also go to that college. Mm. One day I must become like them. One day I must study BA, MA, MSc and all that. So this ambition, you know, and this idea, this inspiration becomes part of their life. Mm. And so many students in the villages get inspired by this. So this is what I call a meeting point. It's an so integration. Yeah, it's an integration, you know. Yes. It's a college to village, village to college. It's an integration way for me, this revolution takes place. Mm -hmm. An educational revolution takes place. And I always advocate this, that every school in the city, every college in the city, or every university in the city, or wherever it is, must adopt at least one, two, five, ten villages, depending on their ability. Mm -hmm. 
because they must put their students in touch with these villages. You see, for me, it's this village is a temple of prosperity. Village is a temple of prosperity. Because if villages are not going to cultivate and produce, people in the city, people in the country will not be able to. So educational institution is a temple of wisdom. And so this temple of wisdom and the temple of prosperity that they meet, it's a revolution. And so so you have demonstrated that actions are much more powerful than yeah. words. Yeah. So the theory yeah. is in practice. Yeah. Are there any regrets you have, Father, about uh, anything that you would have it, have it differently in India or other places that uh, any uh, guidance that you would like them to? I have no regrets as such. Why? Because this project that we began, we thought it was our project. Later, I began to discover that this has been a project in Fordham University. This has been a part of their curriculum in uh, St. John's St. Benedict University in Minnesota. And this has been a project in a number of other universities and colleges. So which means there are people who are thinking alike. Yeah. And it's all to do with, you know, spiritual life. It's all to do with what is inside at the gut level. So if you have concern for people, if you have uh, that commitment, definitely it will come out. What is important for me is service. Whether it be a school or it be a college or it be a family, or it be an institution, that if only we consider what we do as a service, that we reach out to people, especially people in trouble, especially people who are uh, in difficulties, in problems. This is where we become angels. What is the regret that I have is this. Somehow, spirituality is weak today. We have become consumeristic. We have become more and more materialistic. We have become worldly. This is the danger. I remember what the famous Jesuit philosopher said. You know, he is from France. He is Father Tayadi Chandran. Now he said this, we all believe that we are human beings first, with a spiritual nature. But what is the truth is we are spiritual beings with a human nature. So what is primary is, is the spiritual aspect of life. Secondary is the human aspect of life. But today what people are doing is they are giving priority to a human dimension of life and not to the spiritual dimension of life. So what happens is matter takes more importance than the spirit. And these two are complementary. Spirit lives because of matter and the matter lives because of spirit. And so spirituality for me is very important. In all these little projects that we began, whether it be college to village or village to college, uh, whether it be exposure to the villages, village problems, uh, bringing in village children to the university campus and asking our students to teach them and then to conduct programs for these village children on various occasions. These were all sort of spiritual attempts that we wanted to share with these village children and with our university students. What must come is the spirituality. Once you touch your heart and you become a person of the heart, your life totally changes. You look at things differently. Everything becomes different. People become different, things become different, the whole dimension becomes different, you look at the world differently, you smile at the world and the world smiles at you, you see, and you have a great joy in interacting with the world. This is what happens today. So the only regret that I have is in our schools, in our colleges, the spirituality dimension has become weak. Among students, among faculty, among people, among parents. And so if only the spirituality dimension could become more important, if people could become spiritual beings with human nature. I will be very happy. Thank you so much, Father, you. for all your wisdom that we can embrace and learn from each other. I think loneliness, depression, and all the problems that we are facing as an epidemic today, we can help. Thank you.